The past several weeks, we've focused largely on the various phases in a Java stream, looking at it primarily from the black box perspective. How do you actually use the various interfaces and APIs and operations? We're now going to start focusing on stream internals, and we'll also use this as a launching point to cover more advanced aspects of Java streams. So in this part of the lesson, we'll begin our understanding of stream internals by focusing primarily on what can be changed and what can't change in the context of a Java stream. Before we do that, however, it's useful to think briefly about why knowledge of stream internals matter. To get an understanding of that discussion, let's recall the three phases of a Java stream. The first phase is the split phase, where a splitterator is used to convert a data source into a stream. And we've talked earlier about splitterators. We'll talk a lot more about them in this next section of the course. The next phase is the apply phase, where the various elements in a stream are processed by intermediate operations. These are things like map, filter, map to int, and so on. And the third and final phase is the combined phase, which triggers the intermediate operation processing when a terminal operation is hit and a single result is created. And what's important here is to understand which of these phases you can control and which you can't, and perhaps even more importantly, the ways in which you can control these various phases. So we're going to begin our discussion about Java streams looking from the point of view of splitting and combining. So that's what we're going to focus on initially. And later we'll come back and talk about the apply phase. A stream's splitting and combining mechanisms are often invisible to most programs using streams. This is true, again, of both sequential streams and of parallel streams. So you can think of them as basically like a little ninja that you can't see. In particular, Java collections come with a bunch of predefined splitterators defined on them. Recall again that collection is an interface that's the root of all the various classes in the Java collections framework. And in the collection interface, there's a default method called splitterator. And different implementations can override this and do different things to it when you have different refinements of the collection, things like array list or linked list or hash map and so on. But splitterator is one of the methods that's predefined on all collections. And in fact, you can see here in the sequential stream factory method, there's actually a use of the splitterator method in order to be able to call out and cause a splitterator to, to chunk the collection up into stream elements. So that's something that comes with all built-in collections. So right off the bat, it's often the case you don't have to do anything other than use what comes with the Java Collections framework. Java also defines various collector factory methods as part of its collectors utility class. So if you take a look here, you can see a couple of examples. We've talked about these before. You have the to list method, which is a factory method that makes a collector that will accumulate the results of a stream into an array list. We have the to set method that will collect the elements of a stream into a hash set and so on and so forth. In many cases, what's provided out of the box is sufficient. However, there are situations where programmers need to customize the behaviors of data sources in order to be able to create different kinds of splitterators and then ultimately, of course, to be able to combine things together with different types of collectors. And we'll talk more about this later, but the typical reason for doing this is you may have some data source that doesn't fit nicely into what comes out of the box from the Java collections framework, and you may have collectors that you also want to do different things to than you get out of the box with the various factor methods that are available in the collectors utility class. In particular, there's an interface called splitterator, which we'll talk about more in this section of the course. And as you'll see, splitterator defines a number of methods that can be used to take elements of a data source and then split them up into their representative chunks. And the splitterator methods include things like advancing by one element each time, uh, being able to, to split something up into multiple chunks, especially for parallel streams, estimate size, and so on and so forth. 
And then there's also the collector interface. And the collector interface is at the heart of the predefined collectors, like the list collector and the set collector. But then you can also implement collector yourself to provide other ways of collecting the information. So we're going to talk about all these things. I'll show you ways to build your own collectors. I'll show you ways to build your own splitterators. And you'll get a chance to understand how to control and customize the splitting and combining portions of Java streams, which again is useful for both sequential and parallel streams. So that's the end of the overview of the first section in this particular tutorial.